Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you the difference between using the internal aerial on a mobile broadband router or using an external aerial. So in this house here, the customer does have BT as their broadband service provider. The problem is they're so far from the exchange, even though they've done everything correctly with a special filtered faceplate and they've got a nice wired network, they're only getting two or three megabits per second because they're so far from the exchange. There's not much they can do about that. But what they've done is they've gone down the mobile broadband route. Now in this video I'll be referring to this as a router, in the rest of the world you will know it as a router. Over here we often call it a 4G router but you will know it as an LTE router. We're going to be doing a speed test where it's sighted right now, I'm going to do three speed tests and then what I've done is we've run this external aerial outside and we're going to be doing another speed test or three speed tests and we're going to see the difference between using the internal aerials and using the external aerial. Now, when you run the external aerial, you will also have to dial into the router just to tell it to look for the signal on the external aerial, but I will show you that later on in the video. Now, when it comes to these routers here, the best thing to do is find the best spot in the house for it to work. So in this instance, it does actually work well in this cupboard here, which is ideal because this is where all the network wiring is. And luckily, we've got an outside wall just over there. So the aerial goes straight through the outside wall and it's mounted above the garage and we have a good reception there. But if it wasn't the case, let's say if the reception here was awful, then what you could do is you could put this maybe towards the top of the house or if the signal's strongest at the front of the house, you could put it in a separate room at the front of the house and then you could just run a very long ethernet cable and then you could have just have a network switch in this cupboard to connect up all of your equipment. Or if you didn't want to run cables, because it can be a bit of a pain, you can look into a power line adapters. So that's basically where you're running an ethernet signal but you're using the electricity wires in your house to carry that signal to a new location. So let's do three speed tests now, take the average and then we're going to connect up this aerial and then we're going to take the average there as well. I'm just going to quickly show you the aerial on the outside. So if you have a look there, the white cable goes along, goes out there and then basically it's just drilled out through those holes there. Now you have to be careful when you do this because unless you're going to be making up your own cables, if you're just buying them cheaply, then they will come with these connectors on the ends here. So when you're passing them through an outside wall, cover them up in tape because you don't want all the brick dust and everything to get in there and possibly damage the connectors. So if you have a look there, you can see the white cable coming out of the wall, travels up here and we've just put it on a standoff bracket here and that's the back of the aerial there. So it's quite small if you see it in relation to my hand. It's about seven inches high. Okay, so this is the aerial here. It costs approximately just under 80 UK pounds. And if you have a look there, that's the information for it. Now it's an omnidirectional aerial, which basically means it will pick up the signal from all the directions around it. So it's not like a TV aerial where you have to point it in a certain location, it's going to just pick up the signals that's bouncing off the walls and everything all around it. Now, in this one we do get the two 5 meter cables included and that's what we've used here. But there's huge loss on those cables. So with antenna here we have a 2 decibel gain but what you'll find is that across those two 5 meter cables we will probably lose the 2 decibels. So you're kind of at a neutral position. So if you were wanting to start your LTE router further away from an external wall, then you're going to have to look at an external antenna that has a longer cable, so it's got a bigger gain on it, so you can run a longer cable to this. But the problem with those ones is a lot of them are directional, so they're not omnidirectional. You have to point them in the right direction and you have to have clear line of sight. For example, if you're with Vodafone, you need to find out where that Vodafone mast is and point it at that, and that can be very hard to find out that information. So in a lot of households, you won't be able to fit one of them. So an easier way to do it is to probably fit something like this with just the five meter cables. And then if you were having this located in a different room, but you wanted all your equipment connecting up here, then just run a long ethernet cable down from here into the network switch. So I have already tried these. You might've seen these before. These are like rabbit ear aerials. So I've tried these at the back, but 
in this location here, it didn't make a difference. Whether we had these connected or not, it made no difference. So at the moment, we've just got our mobile router connected here with no aerials connected. So we're using the built-in antenna. And I'm gonna run three speed tests now, and then I'm gonna connect up these two cables to the back of it. So we're using the external antenna, and then we're gonna run the three tests again. So I'm gonna fast forward through each of the tests, and then we're gonna look at the results at the end. Okay, so this is the first test. We're going to be using speedtest.net, so we're going to be doing three tests on this now. And I'm testing for download and upload, then I'm going to take an average off them. Okay, so those three results are in now with the built-in antenna and now we're going to connect up the two cables from the external antenna and then we're going to run the three tests again. Hopefully we will see an improvement. And now once these are fully tight on, what we now have to do is we have to change the settings because at the moment it's looking for the inbuilt antenna and we want to move it to look on the external antenna. So you just need to look around on your router either at the back or the bottom and it will have an IP address. So on this particular one, the IP address is 192.168.8.1 and then it will have, for example, a username and a password. We then need to go into our web browser. So right now we're connected still via an ethernet cable. So all these tests are being done via an ethernet cable. So we're not relying on the Wi-Fi between here and here. Between here and here, it's on a Cat5e cable, so we're not going to have any loss of speed there. And then we're going to now change the settings. Right, so we've got the IP address up there. I'm going to press enter. Right, and at the moment, can you see it's got three bars? So this will also give you an indication. Hopefully, when we switch over to the external antenna, hopefully this might go up to four bars or possibly five bars. So what we need to do is we need to go to settings and we've got to put our username and password. Because nothing's been changed in this one, it's just a default, which is just admin and admin, but yours may be different. And now I'm going to go down to system on the left hand side and I'm gonna go down to antenna settings at the bottom. Now it says here, at the moment, it says you can select an antenna type for your router. Install the external antennas based on the antenna type settings you've configured. So at the moment it's still on built-in, so we're gonna now change this to external antenna one and two because we've got both of them connected. So I'm gonna click on that one and I'm gonna go down to here and click apply. And it says success. So now when we go back to home, let's see if the bars have jumped up. There we go, and can you see now I've got four bars there rather than the three bars, so you can see that we have got a better, oh, and it's gone to five bars now. So you can see it was four, now five, so hopefully this should correspond with a quicker speed. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna log out and we're gonna go back to speed test, and we're gonna do the three speed tests now. Now what I will say is when you're doing this, it's a lot easier if you were to have two people, because, Right now, we've put the aerial just above the garage roof because it was easy to, to just you know stand up on the garage roof and do that. But you would think if you were to put it on the aerial on top of the house, so you know up by the chimney, you would think that you would get a better signal. But in our case, we didn't get a bit better signal there. We actually got a better signal on top of the garage roof. So you need to play around with the location. So if you had one person up a ladder kind of moving it around and then the other person doing a speed test on it, or even if you were just to look for this one here, connect it as an external antenna and then look here, you could see if, for example, one location you had four bars and another location you had five bars, you would know then to go for the five bars. So although you can do this on your own, it definitely is easy with two people. Now when you see our external antenna, you see that we did a standoff on the wall, so it was fitted away from the wall. You don't have to do that, we just did that because we thought maybe the signal might be slightly better. But most people will just mount it straight to the wall. And it actually does come with suckers as well, so you can stick it straight onto something like a window. But personally, I wouldn't like that as a long-term solution, but it might be good for doing your testing. So if you want to test whether it's better at the front of the house or the back of the house or upstairs or downstairs, then you can just use the suckers, stick it to the window just to get your testing. 
Now I'm not an expert on the external antennas, but the one we've used is cross polarized, which is good. And that's the reason we've got two cables, one for the vertical and one for the horizontal. If you were to get a very cheap antenna off eBay, you might find that it might just have the vertical or the horizontal, in which case then you ideally would have to install two antennas for the best possible reception. And if you had a look here, remember when we looked here, it did give us the option to do both or just one. So although it is more expensive, it is worth getting a cross polarized one and also one from a good manufacturer as well, because some of the cheaper ones that you get, they're not made very well on the inside. And then you know then that you only have to do the job once and you've done it well and you've done it right first time. Right now, let's get the results for the other three speed tests. Right, okay, so the results are in. I just now need to take an average off them. I can already see that it's definitely a lot higher with the external antenna, but let's get a proper result. Right, okay, so the results are in. So these are the ones with the built-in antenna. You can see, let's have a look at the downloads. It's 17.95, 30, 25. So that's gonna average out at 24.49. And then if we look at the external one, it's 35, 53, 47. And it's averaging at 45.51. So this is the download. So as you can see, that's one hell of an increase. Now, with speed tests, it will constantly vary. You could do 10 or 20 tests and they're all gonna be different. So that's why I did three to take the average. And also, it will depend upon the mast usage as well. So if a lot of people are currently working off that mast, downloading stuff, then you're gonna find that you're gonna get lower speeds. If you were to do this maybe at six o'clock in the morning or in the middle of the night, you will find that the speeds will increase. So basically, they're the results there. So with the built-in one, you've got 24 down and 23 up, and it's gone up to 45 down and 31 up. So you've nearly doubled on the down, a good 21 higher, and on the, uh, on the upload, it's gone up really about a third as much again, isn't it? Because 23, it's gone up eight megabits per second. So as you can see, they're good increases. But even if you don't see a huge speed increase, what you should find is that it will be a more stable connection. So for example, just by fitting an external antenna, it should make it more stable. Because remember we went from three bars to five bars when we dialed into the router. So if you find that it's buffering when you're on your BBC iPlayer or your Netflix, then hopefully by fitting an external antenna, it will get rid of these issues. And sometimes it might be worth spending a bit of money and taking half a day out to do this setup and then at least then going forward, you know then that the signal's gonna be better. Now one thing to bear in mind is that as you're getting quicker speeds, for example, if you were to go from maybe only getting like maybe two megabits per second up to 10 megabits per second, then you will possibly use more as well because with a streaming thing like Netflix, it's not gonna give you high definition if the signal can't handle it. But yet if you suddenly go from two megabits per second up to 10 megabits per second, then it is gonna start streaming in high definition, in which case then you're gonna be using up your data allowance quicker. So the problem with this is it's not actually a, an answer to the problems you get with your service providers like BT, because with BT and other service providers, often it might be unlimited. You might not be capped with your data, but normally when it comes to mobile broadband, you are capped. You can be capped very heavily. So although they are moving that limit higher and higher and higher, you still might only have a limit of 30 gigabytes. And if you've got a whole family using this, you could use up that in two or three days quite easily. So it's just something to bear in mind that as you do improve your signal, you are gonna use it quicker depending on what you are streaming. Now please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care, bye now.